mental toughness for endurance runners, how to push yourself even further in races, in training, all that stuff. How Bad Do You Want to Buy Matt Fitzgerald? Definitely recommend this book. It talks a lot about mental toughness, but it also talks a little bit differently than most books. So most books will talk about uh, setting, you know, certain like goals that mean a lot to you and that stuff's really important. But this book actually talks about something a little bit different. And the entire book is basically based on the psychobiological model. Every decision about pacing or quitting during endurance competitions are taken by the conscious brain, which is based on your perceived effort and basically how hard, heavy or strenuous your brain thinks it is. So what does that mean? Everything comes down to perceived effort. How bad your brain thinks it is. So up until this point, this is about 2015, this uh, model came out. Um, the thought was if you trained harder and you worked faster, then you would just become faster and you could push yourself harder. But what's being realized is that if you can put yourself in situations where you are going faster pace, where you are going longer, what's going to happen is when you go into the race where you have to do it again, the perceived effort will just be lower. So yes, you're going to be better at doing that. You're going to be more fit but you're also just gonna see a lower perceived effort because you've been there before. So it's kind of interesting and it's definitely really cool. It talks a lot about how you can improve it. So a lot of uh, maybe common misconceptions is that you're either born with being mentally tough or not. What that means for you, if you aren't that mentally tough or you wanna improve it, is that you actually can improve yours. You're just gonna have to actually work at it without further ado, I'll go into a little bit of aspects of this book without giving it all away. So basically how it works is once you understand it's all about perceived effort, you just have to figure out a way to lower your perceived effort in running, in training, in races. So a good example or a good analogy that he likes to give in this book is that uh, mental toughness or racing is basically like walking on a fire walk. So, uh, and as you are in a race, the level of that you can push yourself is the level that you can keep walking. So everything when it comes to mental toughness and pushing yourself goes to how much further you can go onto this fire walk without quitting, without saying, no, this is too much for me. I tap out, I'm slowing down my pace, I'm stopping altogether, whatever it is. So here are just some ideas. So the first thing would be to uh, get used to walking on the coals. So the first time you step on hot, hot burning coals, you're gonna wanna instantly back away, maybe run away, you're gonna freak out because you're just not used to it. So if you consistently walk on the coals every day, which means train, race a lot, you know, your first race isn't gonna be your first race. If you're racing all the time, you're putting yourself in that situation to keep pushing yourself a little further, a little further. And also when you're training, training at the pace that you plan to race so you're used to it. So when you are in the race and you are pushing yourself, you're a little more used to walking on those coals. The next one is usually the focus for mental toughness, but it's not the only aspect, and that is delay the time that it takes you to get on the coals. So what that means is if you're running, say, with 10 people, and you're the most fit, you're gonna have to start walking on the coals, if you will, further than everybody else. They're all gonna be dead, redlining, dead tired, burning lactic acid. They are gonna start having to walk on hot coals. You're still gonna be fine, running fine, and if you can delay the amount of time that you have to step on coals, then you don't have to tap into that mental toughness near as early and therefore you'll be able to go faster than they are. So that's usually the aspect that most people look at, but that's just only one aspect because at the end of the day, if you get to a certain level, everyone's gonna be walking on coals and you have to be able to walk on the longest. Delay the time that you have to walk on coals and that is just out training everybody else, being in better shape. Another analogy is to put cold water on your feet while you're on coals. So if you're running and you're redlining and you're and you were in say the hot coal situation, you could put cold water on your feet, you're gonna be able to keep going because you're gonna get that little sense of relief. So an idea for that is to distract yourself. So if, there, if there's ways in races that you can distract yourself from the pain, one example is using caffeine, for example. So uh, studies have found that when you drink caffeine, you can actually go up to 10% further or faster with your endurance. And the reason for that is that you're not quite focusing on the pain anymore. Other distracting tactics are using music, 
um, really focusing on maybe the runner that's right in front of you instead of what's really going on. Uh, don't ever think about how much further you have to go in the race because that's going to make you think about how much more pain you have to endure. Maybe just think about the next turn that's coming up on the race or the next kilometer instead. If you can break up into short chunks your race, so if you just really focus on minutes, like I want to run the next kilometer at this pace or I want to run the next five minutes really strong instead of focusing on whatever you have left in the race. That's going to only make you focus on a small amount of coals that you have to walk over instead of maybe a whole kilometer of hot coals you have to walk on. You're only thinking about the next five feet. Can you do the next five feet? Yes. And then once you get there, ask yourself the same question again. Can I do the next five feet? And it's a really good uh, attitude to have. It's going to allow yourself to tap in to go much deeper when you're only focusing in small chunks. One of the last things he likes to talk about, and this is probably the biggest one, is that if you can make the prize at the end of the coals bigger, then you're willing to put in more pain for it. So basically, and that is the title of the book, How Bad Do You Want It? Because when you're in a race, you're going to ask yourself at some point, how bad do I want this? And that is basically what your brain is asking you when you start feeling that pain, you start feeling the lactic acid, you start feeling you can't do it anymore. It's just going to the question will be, how bad do I want this? Do I really want to push myself? Do I really care about that? So if you can make the, the focus in the race about something that you really, really want, and that is something that pro athletes can do probably better than anyone, is that they can make the race bigger than what it is. You know, the race them winning will be maybe their happiness in their life or whatever, but you find something for you. Maybe you're running a charity run for somebody else and you can really focus on them and the money that you're trying to raise or something like that, but make the race a really big prize, then you'll be willing to push yourself. So these are just some of the tactics that are used to improve your mental toughness and your mindset when you're racing. At the end of the day, you can use all of these things and some of them are gonna to appeal to you more than other things, but the, the key is that you have to practice them. So while you're training, while you're racing, always be thinking about what your mind's thinking about and try to just switch it into a better attitude, maybe a more positive attitude when you're feeling that pain. And hopefully over time you can get mentally tough as well. So thank you very much for watching and keep going after those goals.